On today's Lockdown Reds, we're going to talk about the Hall of Fame. I'm going to tell you my 10 votes, the players who I'm voting into the Hall of Fame. And yes, there's 10 because, well, they didn't vote anybody in last year. And I think that there are 10 players who are deserving to get the vote this year. That's all coming up on today's Lockdown Reds podcast. Let's get going. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You found today's Locked On Reds podcast. What's up? I'm your host, Jeff Carr. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm the host with uh, lots and lots of addiction to the Cincinnati Reds, and I've turned my addiction into information for you. Today, we're going to talk about the Hall of Fame. We're going to talk about my 10 players that I would vote for. I've got some names on here that I'm probably sure you'll disagree with, depending on your beliefs when it comes to baseball. Let's talk about why as we go along. There are 10 names. We're going to start it. We're going to break it down. I've got three in the first segment, three in the second segment, and four in the final segment. These first three, though, it's going to get some controversy. Three guys, and all three of them have been on the ballot for 10 years. This is their final year of eligibility. If they don't make it this year, they ain't making it at least through the BBWAA. They'll probably be on some other era committees, ballots and things like that. They have a shot to make it there. Bonds, Clemens, Schilling. I think they all deserve it. I think they all deserve my vote. And here's why the hall of fame is about on field merit. It's about what the player did during the game. Whether they were at bat, whether they were on the mound, on the base paths, or had a glove on their hand, this is what the Hall of Fame is about. I'm not looking to the Hall of Fame for morality. I'm not looking for the guys in here to teach me how to live and be a better person. Mm -mm. I'm looking who's the best baseball player in their career. How did they set things up? How did they get on the field? And when it comes to bonds and Clemens, they're a part of this group of steroid users. And we got this stigma about steroid users and things like this. Steroids didn't make contact with the baseball. Steroids didn't give Barry bonds. One of the best swings that there ever was still not as good as Griffey, but right behind him, I think. And steroids didn't throw the ball in the strike zone. Uh, This isn't a situation where all of a sudden a guy takes steroids and then he's, mm, he's magically good at baseball. It doesn't happen that way. Now it gives you benefits in other areas when it comes to recovery time and things like that. That was one of the biggest reasons why Roger Clemens had such a long career, but that wasn't why he was effective. Let's talk about this because on field performances and things aside, when you're talking about steroids, I think it's important to note that the player was already good beforehand. Barry Bonds was already a 30 30 player before that. In fact, he ended his career with over 500 steals. Does steroids help you steal bases? No. And, and plus, there are reports and there are estimations that up to 70% of players during the steroid era, we're taking steroids. So we're just going to forget about this whole thing. I mean, Barry Bonds in his own right was one of the best players ever to play. It's insane. That four year stretch where he won four straight MVPs, four straight MVPs. There were plenty of other players who took steroids. They didn't win four straight MVPs. Barry Bonds won four straight MVPs. His OPS plus in all four of those years was over 200. 100 is average. It means he was double an average player. And in most cases, like double and a half, almost triple, uh, triple. At triple, triply, trip, uh, whatever. He was really, really freaking good during those four years. In his entire career, he had non base percentage of 444. Dude fell out of base or fell out of bed on base on first base. Most walks in the history of baseball probably will never get broken. 2,558. He had more than a thousand walks, more than he did career strikeouts. Let that sink in. In a day and age where nobody gives a dang about striking out anymore, he had 1,000 or over 1,000 more walks in his career than he had strikeouts. And not to mention the home run, you know, he has more home runs than anyone else ever. 
And, and people like to say, oh, well, Hank Aaron's still my home run king or whatever. Look, I, I still go back to this. I don't think that steroids should discount anyone from making the Hall of Fame. I think that it's about the on-field accomplishments when you're talking about a player who makes the Hall of Fame. If you want to put it on his plaque, it says that he took steroids. Steroids are bad. That's fine. Do that. But he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Roger Clemens, one of the five best pitchers in the history of baseball. A 3.12 ERA for his career. Not his best season. His best season was below one as far as the ERA is concerned. But his career was a 3.12 ERA. Absolutely insane. He led the league seven different seasons. In ERA, had the best ERA. If you're an ERA crazy stat head when it comes to that, then that's what you like. If you like win totals, he is ninth all time in wins. And if you like strikeouts, he's third on the all time list in strikeouts. Deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Steroids or not, you can put it on his plaque. He took steroids. He deserves to be in the Hall. And lastly, and, and this guy. Maybe he took steroids. I don't know. But the reasoning that he is being questioned as to whether he should be in the Hall of Fame or not is not because of steroids. It's because of other stuff. Kurt Schilling, 15th on the career strikeout list. He's also got a 3.46 career ERA. A couple of career, a couple of oddities for him as well. In 1998, he led the major leagues in complete games. He had 15 complete games then. And this is still during the period of time where complete games are a rarity. In fact, the guy who was in second place had 11. Randy Johnson had 10. Kurt Schilling had 15 complete games in 1998, and he led the league. This was a funny one. In 2001, whenever the Diamondbacks won the World Series, he led the league in homers allowed. He had 37 home runs allowed, and he still put together a season with a 2.98 ERA. He allowed 37 home runs that year, and he had a 2.98 ERA. He's a good pitcher. He just was a good pitcher pitcher. And if you want to talk about his off the field stuff, that's fine. If you want to put it on his plaque that he was a wacko, go for it. But he deserves to be in the hall of fame because his on field accomplishments, that is what the hall of fame is about. It's not about, this is the hall of amazing people. This is the hall of morality that will help you out in life. And you should follow these as a guide. No, it's about who is good on the field. These three guys are good on the field. They get my vote this year coming up. going to give you three more guys who I believe they are sure fire hall of famers, but for three totally different reasons. That's all coming up in just a minute. Before we talk about that, though, I want to tell you about built bar. That is a sure fire hall of famer for your snack game. Built bar is made with 100% real chocolate, but it's also got amazing health statistics as well. During this holiday season, when it's all about the sweets, put built bar into your sweets as well, because you're going to get that craving. You're going to satisfy that, man, I just need something sweet feeling that you've got, but you're also going to not break your diet because we're talking about 180 calories or less. We're talking up to 18 grams of protein, four grams or less of fat, four grams or less of sugar. What are you waiting for? Go to built.com today and use the promo code lock 15 to save 15% at checkout on your next order order that's built.com and the promo code lock 15 they've got amazing flavors for this holiday season that you can check out including lemon dipped cheesecake i mean what more do you need here on that one that was an amazing built bar you can get ruby chocolate which isn't white chocolate dark chocolate or milk chocolate it's ruby chocolate got a berry taste to it plus it's a puff they've got these built puffs that taste like three musketeers, but they're better because they're healthy for you. Go to built.com today and order yourself some built bars with the promo code locked 15 to save 15% off your next order. All right. So we'll give you my first three bonds, Clemens and Schilling. These next three votes are surefire hall of famers, Alex Rodriguez, Scott Rowland, and Billy Wagner. Let me tell you why. Alex Rodriguez was a stud on the field. One of the best, if not the best. I mean, while Barry Bonds was rolling, he wasn't the best hitter. But after Barry Bonds retired, Alex Rodriguez was the number one hitter. In fact, he was phenomenal. He Four homers shy of 700. 696 home runs. He had over 2,000 RBIs. 
if you're an RBI st stat head. And I know that he falls into the holier-than-thou steroids are bad crowd when it comes to baseball. But again, steroids didn't make contact with the baseball. A-Rod did. A-Rod needs to be in the Hall of Fame. He was phenomenal when it came to war as well. 117 war? Get that man in the hall. Surefire Hall of Famer. I believe he should be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Who in his career was better than A-Rod? I mean, he was probably the best third baseman once he finally moved to third base. Probably the best shortstop early on in his career in Seattle. He, there were some arguments there. That's not a surefire argument there. But I think that overall, when you're talking about at the plate, don't care what position he played, he was the best hitter after Bonds retired. Then you look at Scott Rowland. He's a guy that we understand better because of analytics. They were able to explain what he did well better than some of the normal stats of the day that people still quote. He was the best defensive third baseman, period, in his time. I mean, you know, you go back to like Brooks Robinson and things like that, but for his career, nobody was better defensively at third base than Scott Rowland, period, plain and simple. I, I, I challenge you to give me a better one. But when I look at Scott Rowland, he combined the best defensive nature and all that stuff at third base with the fact that he was a pretty good hitter as well. The, the, the hitting statistics are never going to just jump out at you when you're talking about Scott Rowland. But for his career, he put together 70 wins above replacement. A 70 war. That's Hall of Fame worthy. Put him in the Hall. Plus, and now this one's the interesting one because people like to hate on closers. And... Basically, they hit on closers because they're not Mariano Rivera. But if Mariano Rivera had not pitched, think about Billy Wagner. He would have been probably the best closer had Mariano Rivera not pitched. I believe that wholeheartedly. He never led the league in saves for any one season during his career. But for his career, he had an 86% save rate. Barely blew a save. Dude was phenomenal in that regard. Plus, he was a little bit ahead of his time when you come to when when you talk about like a strikeout first pitcher, eleven point nine Ks per nine. We're not talking about the fact that he he wasn't a starting pitcher and he didn't get a bunch of wins, and we're not talking about like amazingly tiny ERAs or anything like that. I'm talking about the best at his position. Billy Wagner was tasked with being a closer. He was tasked with finishing the game. He was one of the best, if not the best, if you're not counting Mario Arnavera, who ever did it. Billy Wagner should absolutely be in the Hall of Fame. He got over 40% of the vote last season or last year. I believe that he deserves to go in. If not this year, then definitely next year. But he's getting my vote because he is the best closer at his position. But if you are tasked with something in life, if you're a garbage man, I don't know why that popped in my head, but if you're a garbage man, be the best garbage man. If you're a garbage man, don't try to be the best accountant because that's not your job. Billy Wagner was never going to be the best shortstop. He was never going to be the best starting pitcher. He's the best closer, and I believe he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. That's why I look at these guys. Again, this, this goes back to the idea of on-the-field accomplishments. Whether you're talking about what they did off the field, and Scott Rowland was one of the best leaders in a clubhouse that any player has ever said they had the privilege to play with. And that's not necessarily a reason that I would vote him into the Hall of Fame, but that's definitely something to include on his plaque. He was an amazing dude. Just like anybody who took steroids or anybody who had a questionable off the field thing going on in their lives, like Kirk Schilling, put that on their plaque. That's fine. But don't keep them out of the Hall of Fame because they're not choir boys, because they are not. Uh, I just, I, just I, I don't understand the pushback that people have with steroids. And that is the only thing I challenge you. I want you to find a reason. Give me a reason why Alex Rodriguez shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame if not. You're not going to tell me steroids because I'm telling you I'm not counting that. I think he should be in the Hall of Fame. Give me another reason because I don't think he can. All right, coming up, I want to talk to you about the last four. The last four guys that I got on here, these, these are interesting people. These are kind of more fringe votes, I think, and I'm not sure that I... I'm in the majority. I'm, I might be in the majority, but I, I might not be in the majority that gets these guys into the Hall of Fame, but they're getting my vote, and I'm going to tell you why. 
here in just a second. Before I tell you about that, I want to tell you about betonline.ag. You go there today, set up your profile, and type in the promo code Locked On to get a 50% welcome bonus. Start your bankroll off ahead of the game and make some cash off your sports knowledge at betonline.ag. As football is in the stretch run for the playoffs, plus you've got bowl games coming up, lots of juicy matchups there to bet on as well. Plus, you've got basketball, NCAA, and NBA, NHL, UFC, boxing, and your favorite Vegas casino games can all be found at betonline.ag. They've got more props, odds, lines, over-unders than you can shake a stick at, and you need to get on the action at betonline.ag. Go there today and set up your profile with the promo code Locked On to get a 50% Welcome bonus and start your bankroll off ahead. That's betonline.ag and the promo code locked on. Betonline.ag is where the game starts. All right, so I give you six. I give you Bonds, Clemens, and Schilling, A Rod, Scott Rowland, and Billy Wagner. And I've already told you, if you're if you're gonna throw steroids at my face in your argument, I'm not even gonna really argue too much with you because I don't believe those should be preclude somebody from making the hall of fame. That was an era of baseball that major league baseball benefited from. That was an era of baseball that saved baseball after the strike of 94, 95, everybody was talking about how much they hated baseball then. And then all of a sudden, 1998 comes the home run race between McGuire and Sosa and Ken Griffey jr. And everybody loved baseball again. And Barry Bonds continued it, trying to get to 70 and succeeding. And then trying to break all of the home run records that he could while also walking whenever he didn't hit home runs. Nobody was better than Barry Bonds when it comes to all of that. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Let's talk about four other guys because I told you at the top, I voted for 10 and I would vote for 10 because I feel like these guys deserve my vote for the hall of fame. I'm sure that there will people that uh, I'm sure there are people that will disagree with me, but here are my final four, Manny Ramirez, David Ortiz, Todd Helton, and Andrew Jones. Three of those guys kind of were in the mid level of vote getters this past season. They were what you would call guys who stuck around, but guys who weren't close to making it into the hall. I believe that there are reasons that they should. Manny Ramirez, when you're talking about at the plate, was an RBI machine. And that's always been kind of the thing that people talk about when they're like, well, what's uh, what's his RBI total? When we uh, were thinking about putting him in the Hall of Fame. Manny Ramirez has a very high, in fact, of the three big time hitters on this year's hall of fame ballot. When you're talking about Barry Bonds, Alex Rodriguez, and Manny Ramirez, Manny Ramirez doesn't really stack up to those guys in the home run totals, but he does in RBIs, RBIs. It's a rod Barry. And then Manny's pretty close to those three dudes or to those two dudes. So obviously I'm including him on this. Plus he was phenomenal with the bat in other areas. He was a very efficient hitter. All throughout his career, you could put him in that number four spot in the order and just leave him there because he was going to be productive for you. He was going to help your team score runs. That was the guy. If you're talking about Cleveland and Boston and worrying about who you got to pitch around in the middle of the lineup, then you've got Andrew Jones. He was the best defensive center fielder of his generation of his era. And he coupled with it some pretty good hitting statistics as well. Kind of guy that had a nice OPS plus, not amazing, but a career OPS plus of 111. There's better, sure. But when you couple it with the athleticism and the ability to make that play in center field, there's nobody better. Andrew Jones deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Todd Helton. I think deserves a vote and partially it's a little bit of bias. I'm going to admit that because when I look at Todd Helton, I see Joey Votto and vice versa. Todd Helton has a little bit of a better batting average, a little bit of a better slugging percentage, but they both were pretty much the same dude. They didn't strike out very much, got a lot of hits, got a lot of walks and solid middle of the order. Just always going to anchor that lineup guy. You're talking about like Rocktober. You're talking about those really good Colorado Rockies teams. Todd Helton was where you started when you talked about how good that team was because he himself was phenomenal. And if we want to do like a what if scenario, a argument for the past, dude should have won MVP in 2000. 
Go back and look at Todd Helton's 2000 statistics. He led the league. In fact, I'm going to pull him up right now. Let's see. They're right here. Todd Helton in the year 2000 led the major leagues in doubles, RBIs, batting average, and slugging percentage, and OPS. He was better than everyone in the major leagues, and that includes Barry Bonds. And that includes Jeff Kent, who won the NL MVP that year. He led the major leagues in doubles, RBIs, batting average, slugging percentage, and OPS. He led the National League in on-base percentage and hits, as well as those other two things. So, if you're counting at home when you're talking about National League hitters in the year 2000, nobody had more hits, doubles, RBIs, batting average. Nobody had a better on-base percentage. Nobody had a better slugging percentage. And nobody had a better OPS than Todd Helton. And he came in fifth for the MVP voting. That is just stupid. Dude should have won it in the year 2000. And lastly, and I think that this is a guy, especially since Edgar Martinez made it, uh, this is a guy who, uh, since Edgar Martinez made it popular to be a designated hitter, David Ortiz just took it to the next level. Best designated hitter in the history of the position. He had more homers than anybody at that position. Plus, he's in the top, I believe it's the top 12 of homers. Maybe it's the top 15 of career homers with 541. If, if, if you're against the idea of a designated hitter making it to the Hall of Fame, you better get with it because pretty, here, pretty soon, next season, I'm thinking, we're going to have a DH in both leagues. And once that starts, it's never going away. So you're going to have guys that are almost going to be career DHs at that point. So you're going to have plenty of candidates in the future for the Hall of Fame at the DH position. Big Poppy is the best there's ever been, and he absolutely deserves to be in the Hall of Fame for that reason. The same reason that I argue that Billy Wagner should be in the Hall of Fame, Big Poppy, David Ortiz, should be as well. Put that man in the hall, he gets my vote. So those are my 10. I have Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Kurt Schilling, Alex Rodriguez, Scott Rowland, Billy Wagner, Manny Ramirez, David Ortiz, Todd Helton, and Andrew Jones. All of those 10 get my vote, and I'm curious. What do you think? I'm sure you're going to tell me, and I'm looking forward to it. You can hit me up on Twitter at Jeff Carr with three Fs, and you can hit me up on the Lockdown Reds line at 513 and, uh, you know, text, call, whatever you've got, because there's definitely players who deserve to be in the Hall of Fame this year. I think it's just absolutely stupid that they voted nobody in this past year, and it was some kind of weird. I, I, I don't know how you explain that. I think that is a super, super big miss by the BBWAA, and I think they're going to rectify it this season by voting in multiple players. But I believe that these 10 guys deserved my vote, and I'm curious as to how you react to that. That's going to do it for us here today. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell you about the guys who just missed my vote. Some guys who might be deserving, but might actually be in the Hall of Very Good, not the Hall of Fame. We'll talk about that on tomorrow's Locked On Reds podcast. Thanks again for listening and making me your first listen of the day. Now go make your second listen, Locked On Bets, just like Locked On Reds, free and available wherever you get your podcast. I'll talk to each and every one of you tomorrow. Thanks again. It might be the off season. But we are locked on Reds every single day.